Man, what a time to be a Halo fan. Chomping at the bit for features available at launch for a game that released in 2008, a show that's just... well, yeah, and a community more divided than it's ever been. If you do a quick YouTube search of Halo, you'll quickly find a reoccurring theme here. People are done with Halo's developer 343 Industries. People are upset over the company's failure after failure after failure. And people, most importantly, are calling for 343 to be fired. It's a very strange time to be a Halo fan right now. Our beloved franchise is being handled very strangely to say the least. At the time of this video, an incident last week caused a massive uproar when 343 released the new roadmap for Halo Infinite and delayed the release of Season 3 until March of 2023, making Season 2 roughly 10 months long. Not only that, they also called Halo a competitive shooter and axed split-screen co-op. To say the Halo community is upset is a massive understatement, but like all big news I will cover on this channel, I give it a week's worth of breathing room to see what new information comes out. And well, it's been radio silence over at 343 Industries. They haven't commented on anything, really, and all that we have heard was an alleged leak that stated that they're confident in the content coming and that the situation will get better. Right. So today, let's take a few steps back and just analyze the situation as a whole. In this video, I'm going to briefly talk about who and what exactly 343 Industries are, what's going on, and the potential future of Halo. To understand the present, we must first understand the past. When Bungie, the original developer of the Halo franchise, released Halo 3 back in 2008, they were hoping to move on to something else and become an independent publisher free from Microsoft's oversight. However, a contract stipulated that they must release at least two more Halo games before they depart. Thus, Halo 3 ODST was released in 2009 and Halo Reach in 2010, both of which are very critically acclaimed. As Bungie was nearing their departure, in the background, Microsoft was looking for someone new to handle the Halo IP. However, an executive at Microsoft Game Studios, Bonnie Ross, pitched an idea essentially saying that she wanted to create an internal studio that would solely work on the Halo IP. That if she got her wish and ran Halo, she would do things differently and be, quote, George Lucas. Well, Bonnie Ross did indeed get her wish and 343 Industries was created, named after the Halo character 343 Guilty Spark. Following the creation of 343, Bungie's content manager Frank O'Connor was promoted to franchise director under 343, and Microsoft Game Studios art director Kiki Wolfkill became an executive producer. This new company would handle all things Halo, from books, comics, shows, toys, and obviously, games. As Bungie moved on to pursue its dreams of becoming more independent, <laughs> just kidding, 343 released Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary in 2011. Two alright reviews. Textures were weird and everything had its contrast turned up to max, but for the most part, it was an alright port. And it also contained a feature that let you flip between the old graphics and the new updated graphics. 343's first independently published Halo game, Halo 4, was released in 2012 to, again, alright reviews. The biggest complaint was the change in the art direction and, well, trying to copy Call of Duty with loadouts for the multiplayer. For the most part, it was totally an okay Halo game and the start of a potentially new and interesting series. However, the story itself had some strange choices and made Chief more human and began the whole man versus machine story arc now seen in every subsequent Halo game. Then came the dark days. In 2014, Halo the Master Chief Collection was released alongside Halo 2 Anniversary and Oh my god, Halo 2 Anniversary was gorgeous, with insanely detailed cutscenes. Everything else in Halo MCC was buggy as shit though. And when I say buggy, I mean unplayably buggy. For years, mind you. And thus started the 343 hate that only continued after Halo 5's release in 2015. You see, for those of you who are unaware, Halo 5's marketing and the actual game that is Halo 5 aren't the same thing. The marketing promoted a game that was vastly different than what we actually got upon release. The trailers and tie-in narrative podcast called Hunt the Truth told the story of how Master Chief is on the run due to some incident. The shady organization known as Oni would send Spartan Locke after him and the two would come to blows in some sort of epic battle. That was the story they were promoting. What we got boiled down to, Chief, return back to base. No. That whole Halo 5 drama was fucking bonkers. Expect a separate, very in-depth video on the subject in the near future. Anyway, 343 Hate was at an all-time high at the horribly reviewed Halo 5. The gameplay was fine, but the story and art direction just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. 
In 2017, Halo Wars 2 was released, but that game is more for the RTS audience of Halo, and was good, but not your typical Halo game, so the majority of the casual Halo audience didn't really care. Then we had nothing. No word from 343 other than a new Halo game is being developed. That was it for years. Then, in our darkest hour, Halo Infinite was revealed, and people shat on it mercilessly. They called it a spiritual reboot of the Halo series, and brought back the classic art style we, the Halo fans, had been craving for years. But the graphics looked horrible, so the game was delayed. In 2021, Halo Infinite's multiplayer was released for free. Then, in December of that year, the 10-hour long campaign was released for $60. This game was great. Great gameplay, great look, great story, great everything. Except it had horrendous microtransactions, a massive lack of multiplayer content, horrible desync issues, and you couldn't even replay campaign missions. 343 said that Infinite's multiplayer would be a live service game. However, the first season was six months, and the second one was ten. In those two seasons, they added tons of new armor for your characters, but even more armor was locked behind, more often than not, a $20 paywall in a weekly rotating shop. Key features in every Halo since 2001, like co-op and split-screen, wasn't included on launch. Same thing goes with Forge, which had been in every Halo game since 2008. The initial good press Halo Infinite had quickly turned sour as months went by and Halo Infinite just kind of sat there. People would complain, 343 would say, we hear you, and then nothing would change. And that brings us to today. Every single game 343 has released has come under some sort of scrutiny. Bad art style, bad story direction, bad gameplay, bad what have you. While there are indeed positives, they are all overshadowed by the constant amount of negatives. When 343 announced Season 3, they cut split-screen co-op, a staple in every Halo game, and a feature they actually promised would be in every new Halo game. And we didn't put split-screen in with Halo 5. I think it's incredibly painful for the community and for us. You know, I think and it erodes trust with the community, as the community is part of our world building. A lot of learnings from that. Um, and I would say, for any FPS going out forward, we will always have split screen in going forward, um, but painful learnings. 343 also said Halo is, and always has been, a competitive shooter. This is wrong on so many reasons, because no, Halo is not a competitive shooter, and Bungie never claimed it was a competitive shooter. Halo is, for all intents and purposes, a party game. It's a game you play and kick back with your friends and chill. Yeah, obviously there's a competitive aspect to Halo, but that's not the main audience. That's not how Bungie designed Halo. Bungie developed Halo with a fun first mentality. Competitive came afterwards. Many people saw this statement from 343 as clear evidence that they fundamentally do not understand Halo. And the final nail in the coffin came when they delayed Season 3 to March of 2023 and showed the new content they're bringing is essentially a smoke grenade and a DMR without a scope. This sent Halo fans into a tizzy and caused them to start calling for 343 to be fired and yeah, just not good stuff overall. First off, 343 is never going to be fired because 343 is Microsoft. They're not going to fire themselves. Second off, I understand. I'm equally pissed off at what 343 has done to one of my favorite franchises. But I don't think firing 343 is the answer. I do think it is time for new management though. Bonnie George Lucas Ross hasn't exactly run Halo the way the fans want. None of the upper echelon of 343 has run Halo the way the fans want. She wanted to make a Halo universe and expand the franchise to new heights. And she did just that, but those heights are not what the fans want. She has also gone on record as stating she wants Halo to be for a, quote, broader audience. This is why Halo Infinite is essentially a reboot after the horrendous last two games. And to some extent, she did it. Infinite's initial release had Halo doing numbers it hadn't seen since the Bungie days. Not only that, the Halo show received good reviews from non-Halo fans. Essentially, non-Halo fans with no prior knowledge of anything before Infinite or the Halo show were happy. The fans, not so much. The broader audience appeal worked, but it was at the cost of alienating Halo's pre-existing audience. But when that goodwill wore off, that broader audience left, and those good old Halo fans were there- oh no, just kidding, they were gone too. Now, Halo Infinite is slowly dying. 343's attempt at a live service game is failing, and a lot of people, myself included, have lost faith in Halo's future. This franchise has clearly been mismanaged. For every one good thing 343 has done, there's at least a hundred things they've done wrong. And I think it all comes down to the management. In fact, check out these glass door reviews. Notice a trend here? And that was just a few I grabbed. There's a lot more. 
Now, I will say, these aren't verified, so any toxic fan could have written these, but they also could be real, and if that's the case, then... Yeah, <laughs> not good. There's clearly a disconnect somewhere between 343's upper management and the Halo community. Getting answers or clarity on a subject from the company is next to impossible, too. And it makes the fans even more annoyed when 343 actually does respond with the generic corporate, we hear you, or in plain speak, we have no idea what we're doing. Halo is in a very bad place. A very, very bad place. When Halo Infinite was released, they could have dominated. Their biggest competitors, Call of Duty and Battlefield, both released horribly reviewed games upon Infinite's release. People began flocking to Infinite because it was good and fun. But then there was nothing. They literally had everything lined up for them. They had a golden opportunity to capitalize on being the predominant multiplayer game, and they squandered it. Now, as Infinite is struggling to hold a 1700 player account, Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 is on the horizon, and that will, more than likely, take the remaining broader audience. So where do I see Halo's future going? Well, at the current point in time, if no change is made and they keep going down the path they're going, then sadly, I don't have a lot of faith. It's hard not to be pessimistic about the whole situation because look at their track record. I really like Infinite, but I haven't touched it in months and don't plan to. I really do hope a change will come. Halo needs it. The fans need it. 343 just needs to take a step back and realize what they've been doing. Or, you know, they could, uh, they can continue to be like the company George Lucas sold his baby to, and, like them, drive all your old fans away. Because money, right? <laughs>